into the heavenlies as one. I have longed for these days. As your father, I have longed for the days when my sons and daughters wouldn't just manifest before me in the heavenly places here or there, but they would all come as one. An ascension people. Because I didn't just die on the cross and rose from the grave, I ascended. And that is part of my inheritance for you is to ascend. Death is not the doorway to ascend. I am the doorway to ascend. Just as I said to my apostle John, I said, come up here. Come up. Come up here. And I say the same to you. In these days, your identity that I'm adding to you is you are an ascension person. You are an ascension people. I'm releasing it. I'm calling up my church all over the earth to be an ascension people. For you are seated with me in heavenly places and your true life is hidden in me here in the heavenlies. And my people, you are being equipped by me, shown by my spirit, taught of the Lord how to live from the throne, how to live from the heavenly places. I have designed you to live from heaven toward earth, not from earth toward heaven. I have taught you. I have brought you. I have paid the price. And I say to you, it is finished. I wanted an ascension people. And I have an ascension people. It is the day. It is the time. This is who you are. And I want you to agree with me. I want you to agree that you are an ascension people. I want you to say yes and amen. Yes and amen to an ascension people. You are not a people of the earth. You are citizens of heaven. With all the rights that belong and all the inheritance that belongs to the citizens of heaven. This is who you are now. So live. Live according to who you are. Live in the ascension. Live from heaven toward earth. Every problem is underneath your feet. Whether it's a worldwide problem or it's your own, it's underneath your feet. You are greater because I have won. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, during worship, you were showing me of how you are working right now in this time. You're working against the fear of man. There's so much fear of man in the world, and there's, there's too much of it in your church. Too much of it in me. Yes. Lord, you are raising up people who know no fear except the fear of the Lord. You have not given us a spirit of the fear of man. Afraid of what people think. What their opinion is of, our, of us, of me, of the church, of our lives. But you have given us a spirit of power, love, sound mind. So right now we renew ourselves in power, love, sound mind. Fear of man, you spirit, we rebuke you off of our lives. 
We rebuke you off of the church. We pray what was prayed in Acts chapter 4. Lord, stretch out forth your hand to perform your wonders and enable your servants with a greater boldness, God. Enable your servants with a greater boldness. <laughs> Where we love our lives, not even unto death. Because you're everything. And our true life is hidden with you. So what happens if our life is taken? We still win. Thank you, God. So freedom. Freedom from fear of man. Freedom from having to please. Freedom from the eggshells. And to any who are overbearing, to spouse, to family, friends, that even now a change begins to happen in the heart. The one who was feared becomes the one who loves. Release that over your family right now. Family members, Friends, those ones who are overbearing, those ones who function to try to make others fear them. Lord, we put your love on them right now. We put your love on them. <laughs> because perfect love casts out all fear. <laughs> so this is a deliverance right now for these ones, God, because they themselves are bondages to fear. They don't even know it. So we put love on them right now. And love does a spiritual deliverance for them, delivers them from this bondage and brings freedom again. Let's them receive love and be loved. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. This is our freedom day. This is our freedom hour. These are the days of ascension. These are the days of oneness with the Lord, of caught up in heavenly places, of understanding, knowing, believing, feeling, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, knowing. I am an ascended being. I am ascended in Christ. I am seated with him in heavenly places. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, let's all stand up for, for a moment here. We're going to... I. We did it this morning in pre-service prayer, but I feel like the Lord wants us to do it again right now as a whole house that we seal... What the Lord is doing and speaking with a shout. We seal it with a shout. It's the shout of triumph. It's the shout of victory. It's the shout of faith that says, yep, this is true of me. I'm an ascension person. I am a person of heaven, not a person of the earth. <laughs> I live for Christ. I am seated in heavenly places. So... Let's raise a shout. You can shout victory. You can shout freedom. You can shout hallelujah. You can just shout without a word if you want. But let's seal this over us with a shout. The shout of the ascended ones coming from heaven to earth over every circumstance, every, every bondage, everything that's holding back. Yeah, the shout. This is a power shout. Woo. There's power in this shout, okay? So get ready. Are you ready? Are you, yeah, yeah. Expect, expect, expect the heaven to manifest over earth as you shout. Expect. So here we go on three. One, two, three. Victory! Shouts of triumph! Shouts of triumph! Ascension! 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 We are one seated with you, O oh God. We are one seated in the heavenly places, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Praise you, Lord. The shout of the redeemed. The shout of the ascended. Thank you, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Still going here. Still going. Still lots of stirring. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to have the Lord. The Lord has some prophetic uh, utterances coming out two or two or three. We want to keep in the focus of what the Lord's doing. So, yeah. So we got a word here and then there and there. Wow, they're just all congregated, I guess. No, I'm not shouting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not shouting today. Praise the Lord. But I do have a word from the Lord. I want to focus. I want to focus on Mary, when she poured out that uh, perfume upon Jesus' feet. That was her inheritance. Yes. That was everything she had. And I want to say that many of you have poured out your inheritance. You poured out everything you had. When things did not go as you thought, you put it to his feet hmm. and you poured it out upon him. And their sweet perfume has risen up to the Lord because of that. There are times when we think something will go one way and it goes another. And God gives us the opportunity to wash his feet. And perfume rises. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's only this side of heaven that we have the ability to make that choice yes, to is. bless Jesus. It's only this side of eternity. Because when we're in eternity, there isn't the opposition. There isn't the, the, uh, the decision to bless Jesus because we're going to bless him all the time. But God honors us with a choice. God honors us, let's say, with a storm that we don't understand. And in that time of confusion, there's a tension. And we choose Jesus. Yeah. We choose Jesus yes. in that tension. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care that everything I thought I was going to come to my life isn't happening like I thought. I choose you, Jesus. And that perfume comes upon his feet and it rises up into the heavens. You know, he said to Doubting Thomas, better are those that believe without seeing. Yeah. And I declare to you, it's better for you. It's better for you. It's better for you for those choices without seeing. And I'm telling you today that there are crowns being given out this day. You think, you see people bringing healing. You see people bringing prophecy. And you think that's great. No, I say, I say, it's the choices that you mm. choose when it doesn't make sense. Mm. That's what, you know, Jesus said, Mary's name will be known in heaven. I'm telling you, your name will be known in heaven for those choices that you decided. Yeah. When everything comes against uh, uh, the reason to believe in Christ because it didn't work out. But your name is known in heaven because you make a choice. Yeah. And what do we do with those crowns that he gives? We toss them to his yes. feet. We have something that we can give to him yeah. today. Yeah. This side of eternity. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many people here are in a battle? Yeah. Look around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're not alone. Yeah. I have three major battles going on in my life right now. One of them is I thought I'd go get glasses, and I went to get glasses, and the, and the eye doctor said, there's no glasses that's going to fit your eye. He said, your eyes are so far gone. And he said, one of them, if you don't get surgery by January, he said, you may lose it. I'm going, Lord, I don't have a piece about this. <laughs> and so I was going to get another doctor's opinion. And I just, I don't have a piece. 
So I went with the way of peace. And what I found out is I'm not battling the circumstances in my life. I'm battling the fight between my soul and my spirit. Who's going to believe the word of God and who is going to prevail over that? Is it going to be? And so with that, I started getting in to everything that Jesus has done. Start reading the scriptures, start believing to build my spirit up, to build my spirit up, to see, finding out that everything was made by him, for him, and through him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And I start building my spirit up more and going, God, I want to go with the way, the way of peace. And this is just one battle I'm fighting. And I'm going, Lord, what are you doing, God? What do you want to do? And yesterday when I was... Last night when I was just thinking, oh, I'll just get away from everything and watch a movie. It's like, no, get into the word, get into the word. The sweet presence of Jesus came mm. in. And what I had to grapple with is this, mm. is when David fought against Goliath, he didn't look at the stature of Goliath in himself, which was nine feet. He looked at how big his God was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about that. And the circumstances, I'm saying, are they, are they so big that my God cannot do it? Are they so? And, and I started stirring my spirit up. I'm stirring it up. And I'm saying, God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that I choose to believe yeah. through my spirit, then soul, then body, that you are the healer. And everything that you said in your word is going to come to pass. Yes. And that's something that's a battle we all fight. So all of you, again, raise your hand to fight in the battle. Lord, whoa, yeah. Lord, you yeah. see these people, yeah. Lord God, in your name, and you come to set the captives free yeah. in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we come in agreement with you, Lord God, with our spirit, our soul, yeah. and our body saying, it's in the mighty name of Jesus. As what yeah. it says in Isaiah 53, you come not only for our sins, but you come, Lord God, to heal our bodies, Lord God, our circumstances. Yeah. So we speak the mighty name of Jesus with the blood, it was the blood of Jesus over every circumstance, Lord, that you'll get the glory, you'll get the victory, Lord God, and we give you a testimony of praise about who you are. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, lots of exhortation coming out today. Yeah. Uh, wow. There's such a sweetness in this room. You feel it? Yeah. Such a fragrance. It's, it's him. Yeah. Sweet Jesus. Yeah, I've never felt more strongly in my life than to feel like I need to get born again. Again. <laughs> Anybody in here flowing with me right now? Yeah. yeah. Are you flowing with me? It's the riches of his goodness. Yeah. The Bible says that his goodness follows you all the days of your life. There's yeah. not one day where his goodness does not follow you. Yeah. Not one. Yeah. If you're ever struggling through a day or a moment or a week or a month or a year and you're just sludging through. And it's like you say, God, you just need a moment of your goodness. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is turn around and you'll bump right into it. He's <laughs> there. You'll bump yeah. right into it. All you got to do is turn around. Okay. Yeah, that's a beautiful Thank picture. <laughs> yeah. All right, one more. Thank you, Baba. The tents of Jacob have been pitched at the wrong watering hole. Huh. Mm -hmm. For I tell you the truth, although they got a sip of water, I am about to pour forth a new and fresh and cleansed place of resting. Amen. For today and in this hour, I have broken forth the membrane that has covered this place. So even now, not only are you a people of ascension, but it is time that the kingdom that is already within you arise. Yep. And you may go forth and you may encounter the things of heaven. But I tell you the truth, you are to walk on earth mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. For heaven must come. Mm -hmm. 
And I have now prepared a way and made available and ready. I am raining down a new power, a new authority, and a new resting place. For even today, as I said again, the membrane is broken and the waters will pour forth even now. But it is your choice whether you will enter in or you will remain at the old and familiar resting water hole. Today, choose life and decide where will you drink. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Uh, trying to cut, yeah. Is it short? It's got to be brief. Okay. Because I know the Lord has a word too, so, yeah. So, um, uh, the battle, of, when, when I was fighting this battle, and I was fighting, 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 and some of you are praying on it, and everyone is joining in. Who are, whoever is praying into this thing is going to also reap from it. Um, and so, I said, Ma, I, I just can't do this battle anymore. And I rolled it off onto the Lord's shoulders, mm -hmm. and it got dark. And it's like, okay, he dwells in the, he dwells in the, he hides himself in the clouds of darkness, and then he shines forth in his light. So it's from dark to light. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was pretty. <laughs> yeah. Let's have, uh, we're going to take up the Lord's table together right now. And as we were worshiping the Lord gave me this phrase. It was, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Love's blood. Love's blood. Love was put on the cross. It was love's body that was flogged. The stripes of love are what heal. It was love that bled. It was love that was buried. And when you, thank you, when you begin to think about it in that way, you see, you see the purity of love that Jesus lived and walked in, right? Every day, love on display. It was too much for religious spirits to handle. Too much for political spirits that try to control to handle. It was too much. And so let's, let's get rid of love. Let's kill love. Wow. What they didn't know is that love is more powerful. <laughs> And not only did love beat the religious and the political, it beat death. It beat sin. Love covers over a multitude of sins. Sounds like the blood, doesn't it? Love's blood. Pour it out. Wow. So this is the body of love right here. This bread is the body of love. When we eat, we're eating love. As we drink, we're drinking love. What does that say about you? You, you are one with love. You are love as he is love. <sighs> so as we take of his body and his blood, love's body and love's blood, we are going to declare, I am love. <laughs> Are you one with Christ? Yes. Then you're one with love, which makes you love. So we're speaking an identity, a reality over our lives. 
Okay, so are you ready? Thank you for this body of love. Thank you for love that we can eat. <laughs> love that we can taste. Love that is one with us. Just as this bread becomes part of our body, love is part of our entire being. It takes over. Thank you for the power of love. By love stripes, we are healed in our hearts, in our minds, in our emotions, in our will, in our bodies. We are healed and whole by love stripes. Go ahead and eat love. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this is perfect love we're eating right here. He was the unblemished, perfect lamb. Perfect love. And now for love's blood. We thank you that love's blood. Well, yeah. Your blood speaks a better word. And that's exactly what love is doing. Love is speaking a better word. <laughs> a better word than, than the political controlling spirit a better word than the religious legalistic spirit uh, speaking a better word than death. Love is speaking louder. Love is speaking stronger. Your love, God, conquers all. Your love, nothing shall separate us from love. Nothing. Because love is more powerful. So thank you for love's blood. Thank you that as we drink, we are saying over our lives, we are love. I am love. Go ahead and drink. Oh, love tastes good. Mm. It's so sweet, isn't it? Thank you, Lord, for the sweetness of your love. Yeah. And as we continue in worship right now, um, we're going to prepare our giving, the first fruits, offerings, whatever the Lord has uh, given that we give back to him. Uh, the first fruits, we give him the first and the best because that's what he's worthy of, right? So, Lord, we thank you for being such an amazing provider. We thank you, Lord, that as we continue to sow into the next building, which is just a tool for your kingdom purposes, as we sow into the next building through our offerings, God, that you, ex you multiply it, you expand it, God. You put, you, yeah, you, you do a miracle. Five loaves, two fish. Five bucks, two cents. Take it. Yeah. Multiply it, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, for how you're moving. Thank you for being such a faithful provider. Thank you that we are not under the economy of the world, which is very, that's very good news. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We love you in your name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So this uh, this morning, I, I've been sitting on this word for about two months. And the word that the Lord's given me for next week, I've also been sitting on that for two months. Waiting. When, God, when? I want to release this. I, this revelation that you've shown me, I want this to come out. So I'm excited that one of them gets to come out today. Hallelujah. And how many of you know that uh, we are in a time that is, and you can, you can feel in the atmosphere, you can, your spirit knows it. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe our eyes don't see it, our ears don't hear it, but your spirit knows it. These are special days. Amen. These are days set aside by the Lord. This is a harvest time. This is a time when, the, the, when people are giving their lives to Jesus left and right. And 
is it's just it's just a wonderful time to be alive and the lord chose you to live now because he's he saw through the corridors of time that you would say yes lord i will be your laborer in the harvest i will be one who lays down my life for the sake of others i will be love i will be love the lord saw that <laughs> and here you are <laughs> It's it's harvest time, and you know we're heading toward the two services um, as a point of harvest. There's there's um, not only herding sheep out there who need healing, but there's also plenty of people who are lonely who want to be set in a family because that's what God does. And so, the the whole point of the two services is not to somehow separate up the body so we can't see each other as much no the whole point is to for god to bring in the harvest to say god we are set up we we position ourselves to have in things in place so that you can add to and that means he's going to send us out also Amen. okay it's not just hey come on into our party please it's us going out and demonstrating the reality of a new kingdom, of a, of a whole no, another reality. And the Lord's setting all that up too. So this is an exciting time. And there's a lot going on in the world. And, and we're not neglecting all the stuff going on with Israel. And then the, all the prophetic words about the sleeper cell groups in, in the U.S. that want to have terrorist plans over the U.S. There's, uh, there's intercession going on for all of those things. And, and so the Lord's, the Lord's, you know, revealing the plans of the enemy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's too many who are, who the Lord's revealing it to that they can't just point to one and say, go arrest that guy. Let's go. He, he's reading what's being talked about in the king's chamber. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So there's a whole group and they can't narrow it down on one, you know. And so all this is being exposed by the Lord. And so this, the, the focus, and, I, and I've been hearing it for, for weeks, probably like three months now. I just keep hearing equip, 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 equip. Because the Lord wants his body in place, ready, tooled up, healed up, ready for what God is releasing on the earth. Okay. And it's already starting in a lot of places. You know, you know that Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, those places are getting saved, that those nations are changing so fast. There's not, enough, uh, there's not enough pastors to keep up with the lost people that are getting saved. It's just amazing what's happening. In, and those are, that's just a sample. But th there's an estimate that uh, 40,000 people are, a, a day are getting saved in Iran alone. Yeah. It's amazing. This is the time we're in. And this is, that's why equipping is important because it's going to multiply out. How many of you know we can have an influence in Iran just from here? Right? Right? <laughs> I'm going to be preaching in Pakistan in two weeks to 2,000 people over Zoom. And sharing the good news with an unreached group in Pakistan. And they're planning on 2,000. And so... Uh, Thank you for your prayers for that, too. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, in uh, Tuesday, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, whatever day that is. So we are in a time and in a season of needing to know the voice of the Lord, right? And that hasn't really changed. The church has always needed to know the voice of the Lord, but even more so now. When the world's going more crazy and we, we have our, our news coming from the right source and, and understanding what's going on. And we need to declare what God's speaking to, not just hear, but declare. We're in the decade of the voice. 5780s, the Hebrew year 5780s is the decade of the voice of the declaration coming out. And the previous decade was the voice was the decade of hearing. So we're hearing and now speaking so that's the time we're in so it, it, it this is uh, an, an amazing auspicious time 
Now, the thing that the Lord has put on my heart is that he wants to bring a purifying and a laser-like focus to the prophetic in the house of God. Not just here. He's doing this all over the place where the prophetic becomes even more purified, more refined. Because uh, up to this point, the, pro- the prophetic in a lot of ways has been just shotgunning. Yeah. You know, just, just spread, spread. But he wants laser. Come on. Yeah. He wants shoo, right down to that point, burn that thing up, whatever's directed to, shoo, just go right through it and burn it up. <laughs> so... So th- this is the time, this is uh, some of the equipping the Lord wants to do right now for, for us, for this house, but also it's bigger than us. So turn to 1 Corinthians 14. If there's any chapter in the Bible that talks about prophecy and, and how the Lord has set it up to do it, it's 1 Corinthians 14. It's the instruction manual. So turn there. Now, I'm going to start actually at the end of the chapter. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 39 is where we'll start. But in, in, this, um, in this little couple sentences here, it's laid out what this is all for. What's the purpose of prophecy? What's the purpose of tongues? What's the purpose of us gathering? This is one of them right here. So, beloved friends, I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. I read over four or five different translations this chapter and. Uh, just I, I love the passion because it brings out so many things. So, brothers and sisters, beloved friends, with all this in mind, be passionate to prophesy and don't forbid anyone from speaking in tongues, doing all things in a beautiful and orderly way. All things in a beautiful and orderly way. You know, the word order there is the word taxis, which looks like the English word taxis. But it's the Greek word Texas, and it actually is translated in other places being in battle formation, battle array. So when you come together, all things are beautiful and in a battle array, a battle formation. People, everybody's in their ranks. They know their orders from the commander. They're standing right where they're supposed to be. Their weapons are at ready. They have what they need. They know where they're at, and everyone is functioning together we're in battle array so these are first corinthians 14 is instructions for marching orders okay this is how we march in these two areas in prophecy and tongues this is how we march forward this is the battle array of god this is what he said this is how you do it okay so i love that that's so that's uh, god has just said it gave us everything we need we already have it so we're going to look at God's marching orders, the, the guardrails that he put in place. This is the way, I, this is the focus, the laser I want to bring on the prophetic. And so everyone here hears God's voice. And if you don't believe that, then you're disagreeing with God. Because he said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. So let's just go ahead and say that about ourselves. I hear God's voice. Amen. You got it, right? You, was, that, was that with conviction? Okay. I, I hear, hopefully, God's voice. Let's say it again. I hear God's voice. Yeah. Yeah. You're agreeing with him. Thank you for agreeing with God. So the whole point of of 1 Corinthians 14, by the way, and the point of this word today is not to try to control. It's not to try to shut down the prophetic. It's not to try to say like, oh, y'all wrong. Stop it. It's not any of that. The Lord's heart is to, man, take what's already going in full, bring that focus in and really and really refine it. So. I'm excited for this, and uh, and what I'm sharing today, I'm basically is a compilation from four different prophetic ministries that I've studied for over for years, and and learned from them. And so I can't say, oh, it's all this or all that, but 
um, there are four prophetic ministries that I've learned from, and this is, so I'm excited to have, um, so we're going to cover a lot of territory today. You might feel by the end like, wow, but the Holy Spirit knows, okay, and he's really our teacher. So we're going to start in uh, 1 Corinthians, yeah, we're already there, 14, the last, yeah, so just to set up the context of of 1 Corinthians 14, because there's a lot that goes before it that sets up that chapter, and we have to understand it in order to understand the chapter, okay? So in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, there's actually, uh, from 11 to 14, there's multiple instructions on what's to happen when believers gather. So let's do it God's way. You want to do church God's way? Okay. (laughs) Please. Yeah. Okay. Verse Corinthians 11 says that when believers gathered there, they ate together and frequently observed the Lord's table. Okay. We got that. We got, we got, go, go on here. Yeah, check marks, whatever. Uh, then, uh, then also in 1 Corinthians 11, men and women participate together and use their spiritual gifts. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 says that the main purpose of gathering together was the mutual building up and encouragement of one another. Okay? Um, Also in 1 Corinthians 14, several people would speak in the meetings and the leaders would discern and direct. Okay? Because it's the body ministry. Right? Uh, In 1 Corinthians 13, expressing love is more important than gifts, teachings, prophecies, than any of the spiritual gifts, love is more important. And love is is the manner by which those things flow in a way that does what it's supposed to do, which is build up the body, strengthen the body. Love is the avenue. It's how it happens. Then the last thing is that everything's to be done in a beautiful and battle array way. Okay. So there's all these things that the Lord said, this is what I want in my in the meetings of my ecclesia. Okay? Church and ecclesia are not the same things. Okay? Ecclesia is the governing assembly of God, and not every church functions as ecclesia. But every ecclesia will function as church. <laughs> okay. So so in uh, let's start in verse 3. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3. And, and, and there's plenty of past, uh, verses in here that are speaking specifically to the gift of tongues and interpretation. And we're not going to hone in on those today. We're looking at the pr- prophecy ones today. So, bring them comfort. Okay, so strengthen, exhort, comfort. Encourage, exhort, comfort however you want to uh, say that, but it all captures it. So uh, one, another way to say it is that you stir up, build up, and cheer up. Okay? Stir up, build up, cheer up. That's what the Lord's purpose in prophecy is. So it's not judgment. It's not anger. It's not to offend. It's not to bring attention to myself. It's uh, not to tear down, put down, or bring down. But to stir up, cheer up, and build up. Okay? That's the purpose, right? And here's, here's what I've come to see and experience. Many people who flow in the prophetic gifting, whether they're a prophet or just the gift of prophecy, many of them have been hurt. Many have been hurt by the very ones that they're called to minister to. Many have been rejected. Many have walked through some kind of hurt from a pastor or a believer or a whole group. Many. And so when they come into a place where prophecy is allowed, I I know a place, in case you don't know, I can inform you. Um, sometimes, and this isn't always true, but sometimes they're coming with this backlog of hurt, of offense. And 
what it does is it causes a filter to come over what they share prophetically. Whether it's personally, one-on-one, or publicly. It filters that. And so if there's anybody here with that gift of prophecy, or you are a five-fold prophet, and you've come with hurt, with wounds, with offense, from all that kind of stuff, this is a safe place to heal. This is a safe place to heal. Okay? And yeah, we won't always get it perfect. That's okay. Okay? And, and we refine as we go. We're not like, okay, it has to be fully refined before we do it. That's not how it works. That's not how life works. We refine as we go. So for any of you who are in that place, just rest. <laughs> Get healed. <laughs> you are loved and accepted. <laughs> okay? And we value that gift. There's, uh, uh, let's see, it was two Fridays ago. I went to uh, the McDonald's right over here at 10.55 at night. They close at 11. Okay. Don't order fries at that time. Okay. Uh, I'm just speaking from experience. It's the kind of fries that sucks all the saliva out of your mouth. Okay. But I came up to the window and there's a young lady there and, um, I said, I'm sorry, I'm here five minutes before you close. I said, I, my first job was at McDonald's, and I was a manager, and I know, I know how it is when somebody shows up five minutes before you close, and you order. I was like, oh, well, we're just trying to, we want to get done. We want to end the day, you know? And, and so I'm sorry. I, I just apologize. You know, I'm sorry. I know. I know. And she goes, oh, really? I, I'm going to be a manager here. They're talking about promoting me. And, and so I'm like, oh, okay, good. And so I said, can I pray for you? And she, oh, okay. And so I start praying. And, I, and, and the Lord is giving me prophetic words over her. <laughs> and I said, the, and I started prophesying, the people who work on your shift are going to be blessed because you're one who loves. You're the one who shares. You're not one who t- controls. You're one who releases. And, and the Lord, is, they're going to be blessed because of you. And this restaurant's going to be blessed because of you. And, and, so, and, and I said, amen. And she's like, thank you. You know, her name's Kia by the way, like the car manufacturer, Kia. But anyway, when we prophesy, it builds up. It cheers up. It stirs up. And it brings that life, and it flows from love. You know, some some of us, like this this print here that we have, um, I'm going to show it again for anybody who hasn't seen it. This, on this print, the focus in the foreground is a muddy lamb. See that? And for some of us who are coming from the um, hurts and the pains, what's happened is a false identity has been spoken over you. And if you prophesy from the place of a muddy lamb, you're prophesying out of false identity. You're prophesying from a wrong view of who you really are. And it will discolor what comes out. Okay? Because when we prophesy, there's two things that are needed. Not just the content, but the anointing. Okay? And the anointing won't flow if you see yourself this way. (laughs) The content may be amazing. We're like, yeah, that's a really good word. But it just falls flat. Why, why didn't that feel like there's that power behind it? And a lot of times it comes down to identity and how you're seeing yourself. So the Lord wants to also heal identity for anybody in this house. <laughs> it comes from a hurt, comes from prophesying and, and, and all that. The Lord wants to heal the wound and the identity. Okay. So here, 
how you see yourself and how you see the shepherd will determine a lot of what flows out. Okay? So let's get rid of those false identities and move back into our true identity because all those wounds and hurts become voices. And we don't want to listen to those voices. The, the, there's filters that come over us sometimes when we prophesy uh, from that rejection. Sometimes I, I've heard people prophesy who just, they just feel they're trying to find significance. And they're trying to find it through ministry rather than from their identity from the Lord. I've heard people prophesy out of pride. I know better than you. And I'm going to correct what you said. And I'm going to do it in the form of prophecy. So that way, it looks like you have to take it. Anybody been around this stuff? And is it just me? Okay, okay. So, we will say again, the fruit is more important than the gifts. And all this is to function through love. Right? It's love that drives it. So if love isn't in there, then the anointing won't attend it. <laughs> okay? So it, it's all part of the, the package, the way God designed it, okay? So there, there's 14 verse 3. Look at 14 verse 6 now. My dear friends, what good is it if I come to you always speaking in tongues? But if I come with a clear revelation from God or with insight, the word there is knowledge, uh, or with a prophecy or with a clear teaching, I can enrich you. Paul is saying here that we can come with four different things. Not just prophecy. Huh? Are you seeing this? Revelation, knowledge, prophecy, and what's the other one? Teaching. We can come with those too. It's all part of what God has set up for the gathering. So, well, this is teaching right now, right? And there's some revelation that's been flowing already. And there's been prophecy already, right? Uh, and we have a word of knowledge besides that, oh, at least at the end. So, you know, all this is to flow and be part of the gathering, right? And we all hear from the Lord. We all know his voice. My, his sheep, his sheep hear his voice, right? What are the way you hear? What's the way you hear? Because we, there's, there's four primary ways of hearing. You can be a hearer, a seer, a feeler, or a knower. Okay? And all of us will mingle in all of them at different times, but there's going to be one that you primarily function in. Okay? Let me describe them briefly for you. If you're a hearer, that means that you are hearing the, the voice of the Lord in your thoughts. He is speaking to you. You can dictate what he's saying to you, you know? Uh, and and that's the way you function. If you're a seer, then that means you are seeing things in, through visions, dreams, pictures, images show up in your mind. You're seeing things. You're understanding what the Lord's speaking and doing through seeing. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. If you're a feeler, that means you're just going to feel the heart of the Father. You're going to feel his compassion. You're going to feel his drawing toward that person or that situation. And you're going, to, you're going to know that the Lord has something that he's wanting to do in that situation or that for that person. Because you'll feel his heart. You'll feel the emotion of it. Okay? And then if you're a knower, you don't necessarily hear anything. You don't see anything. You don't feel anything. You just know. I just know. This is what what we're supposed to do. I know this is what God wants to say, wants to do and speak. I know. I just know it. Shannon's a knower. And there's others, I, I believe Scott's a knower. You know, there's others who are just knowers. I'm a hearer. You know, but we all mingle in all of them. So which one are you? Because understanding that helps your faith to, to build, to be like, oh, well, yeah. Because what we tend to do is compare like, I, I don't hear God like, like Dan does. Well, no, you do. It just may not be the way I do. And so just let, let that be, you know, 
and, and function with how the Lord made you. Okay? So we all get to be a part of this. Now, what's the point of prophecy? Verse 26. Okay? Look at verse 26. Beloved friends, what does all this imply? When you conduct your meetings, you should always let everything be done to build up the church family. Whether you share a song of praise, a teaching, a divine revelation, or a tongue and interpretation, let each one contribute what strengthens others. There's the point. Build up the church. Strengthen the church. It's not about you. <laughs> it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the body. Okay? That's the point of prophecy. From love, we build up through love. That's how it happens. Okay, now I'm moving quickly. Verse 29. Here's another section here. And the, uh, let, and the same with prophecy, let two or three prophets prophesy and let the other prophets carefully evaluate and discern what is being said. But if someone receives a revelation while someone else is still speaking, the one speaking should conclude and allow the one with fresh revelation the opportunity to share it. For you can all prophesy in turn. And in an environment where all present can be instructed, encouraged, and strengthened. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is the God of harmony, not confusion, as is the pattern in all the churches of God's holy believers. So here's very practical instructions of two or three prophets prophesy. What does that tell you? That in every place where the Lord is setting up his structure, there's prophets in that house. Okay? There's prophets in the church of the locale. All right? And, and, he, and what's been going on in, in Corinth is there's, they've been speaking in tongues over each other, like trying to speak in tongues louder than you. I know. They, they, were, they were trying to prophesy over each other. And it was a mess. It was a mess. Now, Paul acknowledged their desire for spiritual gifts, and that was good. But he's like, this, there, there needs to be battle array in this. Right? What it looks like now is everybody's out of rank, and one person's hacking at another person, and one's like, come on, kicking them, and whatever. And he's like, no, get back into battle array. Because the enemy will come in in that state, and he will take everything captive. Come back into battle array. And this is the way you do it. And he just lays it out right there. Have two or three prophets share. And when one, if one is going, and I guess they they had long-winded prophets, you know. If one feels like they've, you know, a new one's got a revelation, then the one that's talking, stop. Because the spirit of that prophet is subject to that prophet. And, you know, I've met people who said, I can't, I can't stop the prophecy unless I get it out of me. And, 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 and I can't shut it down. Well, actually, you can. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So you can shut it down. You can't stop it. It's not like, you know, and well, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. Well, okay, it can keep burning. You know, just, but, but let's, let's stay in battle array. Okay? And... And uh, besides that, there's people who have just, um, who have emphasized uh, the manifestations of the Spirit over the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? Meaning that when, I, when I'm experiencing this power from the Lord, I'm shaking or I'm falling out or I'm, or I'm um, you know, feeling like I'm floating off the ground or whatever. When I'm experiencing this manifestation in my body that, well... I, I've, I've got to, if I don't give the word, then, you know, my, my body's going to explode. <laughs> but again, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So the, the point, and, and here, let, let, look at verse 12 really quick with me, okay? Because it speaks to manifestations. And that's what's happening among you. You are so passionate about embracing the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now become even more passionate about the things that strengthen the entire church. So the Corinth church, obviously, they're, they're experiencing manifestations of the Spirit, which we love those. You know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, you can't help 
that have a manifestation of the Spirit uh, because you're, if you were to take a, a fork and stick it into a socket, you're going to react. Okay? There's going to be something that happens to your body. It's the same with manifestations. The power, the, the immensity of God hits your body. And sometimes it just happens. Okay? But here's the difference. When the manifestation is drawing all the attention to itself, that is out of order. That's not God's battle array. But when that manifestation begins breaking out, oh, it's popping up there. Popping up there. Say like uh, laughter starts breaking out, you know, and you get one person just ha, ha, ha over there, just going, turning beet red and just laughing. And then it starts breaking out here and then it starts breaking out there. It starts, oh, that's the Lord. Because the focus, the manifestation, if it starts drawing attention to itself, it's drawing attention away from the Lord. The whole point of the manifestation is to point to Jesus, to give glory to God. That's the whole point. <laughs> okay? So we're not, I, I, hear me again. I'm not trying to shut down manifestations of the Spirit. I experience manifestations of the Spirit too. Okay? The, but the point is, the focus is always on the Lord. It's always to glorify Him. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like last last Sunday, we had the fire tunnel, and it was so fun, long but fun. And <laughs> and you know, I, the the privilege of being here at the end is that I got to see people coming off crying, people coming off who were just smiling and just like wow, people coming off uh, who were who were shaking under the power because the Lord was working on something in them. You know, I I, I got to see all that, and many of Many people came to me over this last week or let me know how blessed they were by going through the fire tunnel, okay? Uh, and, and, and by the way, I did get permission for that because some were wondering, did, well, that just, no, we, we talked about it the week before, okay? So, <laughs> so, and we're just, so we're on the point of refining it. We're refining it to get it so it'll move a little faster. Hallelujah. Okay, so we can get everybody through. All right, but... But these, uh, these, the manifestations that, that we all experience are to glorify God. That's, that's what I want to bring across right now, okay? So another little point I want to bring up is how to relate with prophets, okay? Because this, this has been a challenge for some of us. I know, because you come talk to me. Like, how, how, do I, how do I relate with so-and-so and that person? Here, I've had a friend for 25 years who's a prophet. And I've learned some things from <laughs> rubbing shoulders with him for 25 years. And, uh, and the, the, the challenge with prophets, because remember, we're, talking not, we're not talking about the gift of prophecy right now. We're talking about people who are the office fivefold gift of prophet given by Jesus to the church to equip the saints, right? <laughs> the, those those ones who, particularly if they're governmental prophets, because there's four levels to every gift, that, um, according to Joel chapter 2, the Spirit's poured out on men, women, maidservants, uh, uh, men servants. There's a progression there, actually, of a building up of a gift. So um, you, your, your gift has room to grow all the time. <laughs> okay? But particularly for governmental prophets who have a... a, a metron, an area of influence over a region, over a whole nation or something like that. Those guys, those ladies, they live in the future. They're, the Lord's shown us stuff of future events. Now, the gift of prophecy rarely touches on future. It touches on build up, stir up, cheer up, and the, and the now, you know. And it can sometimes bring in a, a future thing, but most of the time it's, it's just to build up the, the body. Okay, but a prophet, a lot of times they'll be living in the future and looking back at the now and being like, come on, come on. We need to get over, come on. Why aren't you coming? What's the problem? God, like, oh, oh, yeah. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Let me tell you what's happening, okay? This and this and this and and we need to go. We need, to, we need that to happen. So are, are you going to come with me or not? Okay. They live in the future. And so what they, what's hard is to relate to those two of us 
who are living in the present. And what can happen is, and it's not their heart, what can happen is they can make you feel like you're missing. They can make you feel like you are behind. You don't understand. You don't get it. My friend of 25 years has taught me through his example. Okay? These are observations that I've made. Because I love him. And I want to stay in relationship with him. And not just be annoyed with him. Amen. So, they can come, but prophets like that can come across as arrogant. They can come across as opinionated. If you don't agree with me, you're wrong. They don't mean to do that, though. I can speak from the experience of my friend. They don't mean to come across that way. I've had multiple conversations with him. Like, Tom, this is the way you came across. This is not, how, no. And so over the years, I've learned, okay, we, it, 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 can, it can be hard sometimes working with prophets. And many prophets, by the way, have been heard by the church. Many of them. That's why so many of them have parachurch ministries where they drop in and go rather than drop in and stay because it, it, it just, it's hard for a, a church to take on and, and relate with that person without understanding. Okay. And so I feel the heart of the Lord that we understand how prophets, because the Lord's going to bring more prophets our way, by the way. So we need a grace to understand how they function in their gifting. Now, all of them are that way, but there's enough that there's a pattern. Okay? And, and so if we can have that grace, because I, I remember a prophetic word. I can't remember who gave it, but a, a prophetic word that said, many prophets will be healed in this house. Yeah. That it'll be, this will be a safe place for prophets. And so if the Lord wants to do that, then amen. And we'll go with him on that and understand where they're coming from. <laughs> okay. Now, what's the point of all this? All this stuff. Thanks for hanging in there. What's the point of all this? Okay. Verse 24. If everyone is prophesying, and an unbeliever or one without the gift enters your meeting, he will be convicted by all that he hears and will be called to account for the intimate secrets of his heart will be brought to light. He will be mystified and fall face down in worship and say, God is truly among you. Hmm. So the point is not just building up the church. The point is showing the world that God is yeah. real and that he's Right here. <laughs> He's not far off. He's right here. God is among you. Okay. Are, are, are you okay? Are, are we understanding all this? Yeah, flowing with all this? So I've, uh, this, what, what we're doing this morning is the apostolic order that the Lord set 2,000 years ago. And we're just saying, yes, this is what we want. We want the purity, the pure prophetic. We want the laser focus. We want to have the fruit be higher than the gifts. We want everything to be done in love. And we want to see all people who have been hurt by church get healed. <laughs> because even, even in the offense or the, the, the rejection, the woundedness, even in that stuff, and even if they're functioning from it at some degree, that we come along and say, encourage them. Like, yeah, that was a good word. But man, are, can I pray with you? You know, I think the Lord wants to do some inner healing for you. <laughs> however it works, however the Lord sets it up. Okay? Maybe not that way. Okay? <laughs> you need some inner healing. I'm going to minister to you. <laughs> and they'll be like, okay, there's the next little hurt. I'm just going to march on. No. But understand where they're coming from. Understand that many of them have been hurt, rejected. Many of them uh, have a real heart of gold for the church. 
and have a and and truly love Jesus with all their heart. Just struggle sometimes relating the future to the present and understanding how to lead people forward into what God's saying. And that's why there's also apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The prophets need them. And we need the prophets. So, let's pray. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's stand up. We're going to make some decrees right here. Okay? We're going to start by just reiterating what we said earlier, okay? I hear the voice of the Lord. I know my shepherd. I can minister to others prophetically with the goal to love and build them up. Lord, purify the prophetic in me. Make me your laser. Make this house your laser. And as a house, we choose to honor the prophets and to see them healed. Lord, we thank you for what you're moving, how you're doing. Sorry, I didn't tell you. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God, for the increase that's happening where the prophetic is increasing on the earth because you're bringing it out more and more. God, your church is designed to be hearers and then doers. So we need to hear first and then speak, declare, go do whatever you're speaking. So thank you, Lord, for expanding upon us this prophetic anointing uh, upon your church all over the earth. Let's just expand it all over the world, Lord, that you that your healing comes to your prophets all over the world. Your healing comes to those who have the gift of prophecy, who have also been hurt, been rejected, been kicked out of church after church after church, that there would be a healing for them, a restoration for them, God, and that the, the offense that they're carrying, the anger that they're carrying, the rejection that they're carrying, any pride, any sort of sense of trying to find significance, that it will always be healing upon them. Healing that you come back into your true identity as a son, as a daughter who is fully loved and with nothing to prove. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for setting your church in order for setting your church in battle array all over the earth, in the different places, that the church of the locale, that there's parts of the body that are coming into uh, the battle formation. And it, as that happens, it blesses the rest of the body in that location. Yeah. yeah. I, I even felt like that was a prophetic declaration right there. Lord, the one, the parts of your body that will align, that will come into order with what you've said and how you want it done, that it will bring a blessing to the rest of the church in that area. So, Lord, what you're setting in place here, let it be a blessing to the rest of the church in this whole area, God. Let it be something that releases life, that releases healing and freedom. Let it be something that allows other churches to open up to the prophetic. Instead of squash it. Because there is treasure in that field. But there's so much fear around it. So we thank you God for the change. We thank you Lord. For the setting in order. Yeah. Lord we praise you. We give you the glory and the honor. For the day we're living in. 
<laughs> for the time of harvest, God. Oh, man, there's going to be loved ones who say yes to Jesus that we've been praying for for so long. There's going to be prodigals that come home who said yes years ago and then walked away. There's, they are coming home to the Father's heart. There's going to be people who seem like they're the hardest and they'll be as soft as freshly plowed ground and they'll receive the seed and it will grow and produce 30, 60, 100 fold of what was sown in their life. God, we thank you for the whole LGBTQ community, God. These are ones, Lord, that will burn for you, that will have such a zeal for true love, for the love that you have, not the world's kind of erotic love. We're talking true love. We're talking the love that leads to rest. Thank you, God, for that whole community coming into the kingdom. Thank you, God. We praise you. We glorify you. Thank you for including us, God, in, in this time. It's wonderful. It's so fun to be your church, God. It's so fun to be the governing assembly of God on the earth. We thank you, God, that, yeah, just to return back to where we were started after worship, that we, are, that we live in ascension. So we live in love. We live in rest. We live where it's where uh, we live on the other side of it is finished. Thank you, God. In your name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, huh? Yeah, we love you, Jesus. We love you. We love your church. We love how you're moving and working, God, in our lives. Praise you. Well, we're going to uh, transition to personal ministry time right now. Uh, so if you, uh, the, the word of knowledge that we have is for any mind fog. If you feel like there's a mind fog going on, uh, maybe, and that can come from a chemical imbalance going on in your body. The Lord wants to heal that today. So if that's you, come forward. There'll be a prayer team, or you can grab somebody next to you and say, pray for me. I want, I want to, the mind fog to blow out. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and then the deliverance workshop starts here in one o'clock. So, um, so grab something to, to some food, some lunch, and then come back and we'll have our time together learning about kicking out uh, Freemasonry. <laughs>